How you doing? I hope you're well. So this week, the media finally discovered crime because finally they found a criminal who fits the bill as they ignore others who don't. And make no mistake, this is a villain. And I credit the outrage, even if most of it is only to exploit a tragedy. The CNN political reporter concludes that white Americans aren't doing enough to fight racism. You know, oftentimes it is African Americans who talk about racism. It is really a white cultural problem uh, that white Americans have to come to terms with. Why is it that uh, African Americans and brown and black people uh, more generally are seen as the other or demonized uh, so easily in a lot of our politics? You know, we sort of talk about white supremacy, but it's also the ways in which people talk about folks coming across the border, the demonization uh, that goes around uh, uh, about those folks, that somehow they uh, also are a threat. Uh, right. to America. We just demonize. So racism is a white cultural problem and whites should come to terms with it. How does she know that they haven't? What planet is she on? And why do they only get CNN and MSNBC there? But she echoes what her peers say, that whites share the guilt for their race's worst actions, as if individual choice, responsibility, or mental illness don't exist. Only an overriding pigment that unites us in complicity. Talk about a wide brush. Meanwhile, this dope thinks those who embrace free speech do so to appease racists. Well, Garrett, look at the way the right tried to weaponize the idea that the, Depart the DHS was going to essentially try and attempt to, to monitor hateful rhetoric, right? right. They, they want to make it seem as if it's some sort of big brother. And it's like, this is always what the right does to appease the white supremacist movement by saying, hey, free speech. Don't touch uh, speech. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So if you're for free speech, you're helping out the KKK. That's a leap evil Knievel couldn't make. <laughs> really, MSNBC, maybe it's time to chuck Todd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Terrible pun. <laughs> Disgusted by myself. He's a turd. <laughs> A turd with a head injury under a hairpiece. <laughs> I could go on forever, but I won't. Then there's this guy saying we need a new war on terror, the terrorists being, of course, Republicans. My guidance is that we have to treat it as the terrorist threat that it is. You know, we rallied on 9-11. There was no question about what the country was going to do. We are facing the same threat. We should label them the domestic terrorist party. Hmm. Wow, next they'll say Republicans are divisive. So this raises an idiotic question because it's raised by idiots. Are you responsible for a person's crime because you share a pigment? And hasn't it been drilled into every white person's head since they were kids not to do this kind of generalizing, especially when it comes to race? This is what the Democrats are riding on, and it's a unicycle with a flat tire. But let's follow the logic. If you're responsible for what bad whites do, what about what good whites do? When a white person does something great, should you applaud me? Does, does Elon Musk's privatizing space travel and building electric cars cancel out me having the same pigment as a mass shooter or me at a party dancing like I'm in a body cast while gnawing on carrot sticks? <laughs> Isn't that true, white supremacy? That by virtue of race, I played a role in inventing air travel? Well, I actually did. More than once in college, I took acid and then jumped off the library roof into a dumpster <laughs> full of trash. But by this logic of identity politics, I own everything good and everything bad, which is nuts. By claiming that all whites are complicit in the act of a white madman, CNN backdoors into true white supremacy. If whites put a man on the moon, I guess that means I might as well be Buzz <laughs> Aldrin. <laughs> and you're welcome for the tang. <laughs> Idiotic. It's idiotic, but let's play this game. Should all the Japanese share guilt for Pearl Harbor? And should all Japanese be credited with the best toilets on Earth? <laughs> Admit it. They're pretty good. Very clean. Should all Germans answer for the Holocaust? I say yes, except for Heidi Klum. <laughs> but they also gave us the pretzel. Should all blacks be credited for inventing the best music ever? I bet you didn't even know they came up with polka music. <laughs> but they're also partly responsible for the black eyed peas. <laughs> yeah, I know. You see how stupid this logic is? MSNBC and CNN choose the worst from a group and ascribe it to the whole. 
But how would they feel if we judge them by Joy Reid or Jeffrey Tubin? <laughs> Actually, I do. <laughs> All the time. I'm a hypocrite. It's a part of their single variable thinking. They have no mental dashboard as they fly through life storms. No data, statistics, probability, experience. They only see life through one filter, race. So what about me? Well, in case you haven't noticed, I'm short. In new research on violent crime, short men were twice as likely to be convicted of a violent crime as the tallest. <laughs> now maybe most guys are more likely to take a swing at Danny DeVito than Dwayne Johnson. But then you find out that the real variable predicting violent crime was IQ. It's the dumb short guys to blame. <laughs> so I'm off the hook for stealing that big wheel. <laughs> and it's not just within short people that differences like IQ occur. It happens in all groups. In fact, there are bigger differences within one group than there are between two groups. It's why you have an Einstein and a Tom Arnold. <laughs> it's why you have Thomas Sowell and Joy Reid. <laughs> there are bigger differences within race than between races. That's huge. And why? Because we're individuals. We're brilliant, funny, weird, high IQ. But enough about me. <laughs> we're also depressed and crazy and vulnerable and dangerous. OK, enough about Kat. <laughs> But it's not between groups, it's among people, individuals. So do I owe an explanation for short, violent dumbasses because I'm short? Hell no. Just as I don't take credit for all the great work little people do, like acting as a shoe tree in my closet. <laughs> but if you favor group identity over the individual, you would, but you don't, because we see the person. Only the left and the media see groups. The only herd mentality on our end is walking away from them. And the only place the left doesn't want division is in math class. Look at Kat, look at Tyrus, and look at me. The most important thing to gain from this show is that we are different persons. I don't see Kat as a white chick. Tyrus doesn't see me as a white male. Well, he doesn't see me at all, depending on how close or far I am to him. <laughs> Nor do I only see him as a giant who can flick me into space with his pinky. I see him as maybe the smartest guy I've ever met. I just hope Kudlow isn't watching. I told him the same thing in the steam room. <laughs> and I see Kat as the funniest creature on Earth, and she's not even trying to be funny. She's just being Kat. So in short, <laughs> white supremacy, <laughs> identity politics, <laughs> you media. What we are doing right now on this show is the answer. We embrace the person, not the pigment. So screw your identity it's an evil that helps no race. It's just about power, as evil always is. Please welcome tonight's guests. Her name's Tafoya. And if you're a damn, she'll destroy ya. <laughs> Former sportscaster Michelle Tafoya. So many people tried to cancel him. You'd think his name was CNN Plus. Oh, the Rubin good. Report good. host, Dave Rubin. Give her liberty or give her an e-cig and a shot of tequila. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. And Popeye wants to know what he eats. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. So, Tyrus, short people aren't more likely to commit violent crime. Going against your theories. Okay, first of all, they said they were. It was just the smart ones don't get caught. That's exactly That's right. That's what it is. You lead your little ring of married tiny men. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have this code of short valor where you won't tell on each other. So, <laughs> well played, Penguin. You guys get away with it. No, you know, great monologue. Like, Thanks. phenomenal monologue. And it, yeah! As, as someone who grew up when something bad happened on the news, I'd cross my fingers and be like, please don't be a brother. Please don't be a brother. Because we all get blamed for it, right? Now when we get into this point of equality, That's... not me, because I know what it's feel like to be grouped. Yes. But when someone gets to go on TV and their play is to group all white people together and say they're all bad, mm -hmm. you're no different right. than 
Earl on the porch who's like, all y'all need to go back to Africa. Yep. It's the same thing. It's just because when they say it, they're saying it from a place of supposed wisdom. It's not. They're yep. just playing down and they're running the race game. It's just because it's coming from a person of color. They're supposed to get a pass because they have convinced white Americans to be afraid to say, no, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're, you so happen to be black, but you're an right. That's okay. And you need to, you need to, Americans need to start doing it. You gotta, white America has to stand up for themselves. No one in this building owns slaves that weren't like a sex slave or knew Except you or something. <laughs> yeah. But like, they didn't. They don't own plantations. They got to pay bills. They got, I, we all have the same issues. We all have the same hurdles. Different. Every one of us has got a sob story, has a tragic, has a scar somewhere. It has nothing to do with the color of his skin. It's life and where we live. So they're doing this bunching mm -hmm. because that's the easiest way to get attention mm -hmm. and get ratings. I mean, there was a lot of murders, and they only focus on one. Why? Because it might get an argument, and people will tune in. Right, and they need the ratings. And that's the tragedy of it. Yeah. Greg, to be totally clear, I just want to make sure that we all know that no one in this building has a room in their basement <laughs> with several sex slaves. Nope. Nope. I can't stress that enough. There is absolutely no private Not lock in room this building. right next to the mail room, and that's M-A-L-E. Oh. If you know what I'm thinking. I have to, I'm sorry. We were doing so well. I know, I know, I know. I was almost a serious person. You know, you were the first, you, you were on our first show. Yes. What did you say? So I have to call you out for being the, because I doubted you. You, what did you say in the first show? Well, first off, before I tell you that, I just want to say on the off chance that I say anything offensive here during the Gutfeld exclamation point program, I just want to say that I'm doing today's show as a black lesbian. That's okay. what I am <laughs> identifying as today. But on the first show, the first Gutfeld show, I was sitting in this chair and I said you would be the number one king in late night within one year. And Greg? Thank you. I said no, it's not possible. I doubted you. I doubted you because you were gay. I and and I doubted and I doubted you because you're short and yet here we are. Yes. I'm glad we can we can exact bigotry against each other and still respect each other. I'll see you in the mail room later. <laughs> yes. yes. You'll deal with me. I'll be in the mask, but I'll be the short one. <laughs> I don't even know if you have an opinion. Gentlemen, on this. please. I'm with, I'm with child. Please. <laughs> I've told you. I'm told you can get an abortion if it's necessary. So. <laughs> We're doing that story tomorrow. Oh, okay. Oh, you foreshadowed oh, us. Did. What's with the deep? What we used to be all about individuals. Now it's all about groups. Of course. Well, the best example that you showed there was Thomas Sowell and Joy <laughs> Reid, right? Because it does not matter. Their skin color does not matter. He is probably the most genius economist we have ever had in American know. history. Yeah. And and she is an idiot who works at a <laughs> mental institution. Yeah. And and those people, their skin color has nothing to do with those facts. And if you look at them, that's the beauty. It's what Tyrus is saying. If you look at them and you go, oh, that is a black man. He must think this way or believe this about economics. And she is a black woman and she must think this. You need a mirror because you are the racist. You know, it's funny, uh, uh, Michelle, I look at this and I think about myself in the early 2000s and being accused of Islamophobia. <laughs> this is kind of a new version of Islamophobia. Yeah. And sometimes I think maybe I might have been guilty. Like when I was like, you know, because of uh, uh, because of 9-11, yeah. I was like, I was looking everywhere, and I'm not, you know, but so maybe I wouldn't, I have to actually, I mean, if I have to accuse these people of doing that, I have to look at myself and see it. But it's kind of the same thing, in a way. You're starting with the man in the mirror, and yes. that is laudable, Greg. Oh, thank you. You know <laughs> uh, I'm a hero. That's my, my tip of the cap to Michael Jackson. <laughs> um, so they do it based on gender as well. Yeah. Remember when we had the war on women mm -hmm. a, a while back with Hillary Clinton telling us all we, women were oppressed and it, there was this war on women and I and here I was working as a woman in sports one of the very few and I was like where is it? I don't I don't see it. I just think that people forget that we're individuals which was what you were talking about. And if you say that someone's not an individual and they're only part of a group it's because you don't have another argument. Yeah. And it's because, and you don't give that person agency over their own lives. That's the You're saying, scary part. Uh, it's too bad you're a white Hispanic woman. You'll never be a sportscaster because they just, you can't. They said that to me. Uh, did they? Yes. I oh, would have held your why hand. That's why I, tra I, 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 uh, what I, I transitioned into a... <laughs> Uh, a short man of German Jewish okay. descent. Is that a painful transition? <laughs> but, yes. 
Greg, can I just mention? Legendary since, sportscaster. Oh, Tell the truth. You, you're you legendary. I got to get you. Yeah. I got to get you. Yeah. Michelle, Michelle mentioned Michael Jackson. He's proof of it because in what other country could a young black boy grow up to be an old white woman? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. All right, Kat, you are in a group of one. Yeah. So to speak. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, how do you get people to break out of this idea of just groupthink? First, well, first of all, I just want to say, you know, the first version of your monologue that I read, you said I was the funniest person you knew. <laughs> then I found, today I see you did some editing and decided to change person to creature. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice that. Probably, yeah, probably is more accurate. Yes. Uh, I think that it's not good to view everything through a predetermined lens, no matter what that lens is. Mm -hmm. but these people obviously do it with race. Uh, but if it's anything, because if you already know what you think before you look at something, then you're not thinking at all. Right. You, can't, you can't think critically. And that's never going to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that looking at situations individually and people individually is the only way that you're actually going to be processing what you're seeing. Good point. Thanks. Not bad for <laughs> not a creature. Not bad for a creature, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, before we go, a quick reminder. I'll be in Salt Lake City, which is in Utah, Kat. Yeah. This Saturday for my book tour, Tom Shalhoub, but also Tyrus will be there. Plus, we got some, we got some new fall dates in Connecticut and Texas. Go to ggutfeld.com for ticket info. Up next, her singing was bizarre, and now she's the ex-disinformation czar. <laughs> Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.